Okay, so hello, good morning to everyone and welcome to our classes or to our first day of uh, synchronous class for this uh, third term and uh, welcome back, okay, to um, our sessions, okay. So first of all, I would like first to introduce myself. My uh, name is uh, Dr. Benedict Cris Estariha and uh, I am uh, going to be your professor in Physical Education 13 wherein we are going to be focusing on individual and dual sports, okay? But uh, before we start on anything, I would just like to advise everyone that uh, let us talk about first of what you are going to be expecting in uh, Physical Education 13, particularly of what are the things that uh, you are going to be focusing on, okay? There we go. Okay, so welcome to physical uh, to the third term. And again, uh, we are uh, going to be having uh, physical education 13. And uh, this is going to be focusing on individual and dual sports. Okay, now just before we start, I would just like to remind everyone that in this class, you have to remember that uh, this will not only teach you about movements in line with individual sports or playing with a partner, but instead, this course is actually designed to develop the skills and your fitness and to develop your fitness level through the different types, or actually there are going to be two types of racket games and other sports and dual sports that we are going to be focusing. Uh, Coach, why is it um, dalawa lang po yung racket games na uh, ipofocus natin? Okay, particularly, I am uh, going, we are going to be focusing on um, the sports of badminton and table tennis, which is actually um, the two main sports that we are, that we have in available here at uh, Enyomoa. And uh, technically, um, the other uh, sports that uh, we are actually going to be doing also would be swimming. Okay, pero unfortunately, as of this moment, okay, hindi pa po tayo pwedeng mag face-to-face -face classes. Ayan na, lilinawin ka po po na, no? That all of our PE classes would be technically uh, on an online basis. Actually, this is going to be the last term that we are going to be having an online class. Okay, so... Um, expect that uh, our other uh, by the next year, okay, if uh, you're still going to be attending classes here at Enumoa, okay, you are uh, going to be doing it on a face to face basis for uh, physical education 14, okay. And uh, again, uh, Enumoa is actually going to be catering for swimming or aquatics, wherein we are actually the swimming center or we are the swimming center here in NCR. So expect that uh, in the near future, um, you would be able to see that uh, there would already be swimming classes. Actually, that's already started with our senior high school uh, students, but uh, it is going to be passed on also to the college level, okay? Now, please be guided that the prerequisites, uh, credits, and time allotment for uh, this class is that um, you should be able to pass the physical education 12. So it means that um, for physical education 13, uh, you should be able to have passed that subject. Now, this class is going to be a two-unit class, okay, wherein you have to attend two hours and 40 minutes of um, actually a little bit of lecture, um, a little bit of physical demonstration, yet a lot of activities or assigned performance tasks that is going to be um, assigned to you on a weekly basis, okay? So, it means that you're going to be um, attending, okay, 13 and a half weeks. That includes already your uh, midterms and your finals okay so course requirements is that at the end of this course okay you are expected to complete all of your major exams particularly uh, most of them would be uh, are actually uh, yes most of them would be performance tasks with a passing mark of 60 percent okay um, you should be able to read the assigned text and other learning materials prior to attending your classes if there are any um, you should be able to participate in online class activities and discussions, including individual and group dynamics or achieving to achieving your learning outcomes. You should be able to have a regular and punctual uh, attendance in class 
and submission of requirements which I am very, very strict at. Okay? Very, very strict to po ako pagdating po sa papasahan ng requirements. And you should be able to have access to the following, your 365 account, your Outlook, your definite, of course, definitely your Teams, your OneNote, and your Class Notebook, particularly your assignments. Okay? So, class policies, uh, we actually start our classes on time. Um, wherein you have the responsibility to be in class promptly and regularly. So technically, I would try to open my class five minutes before the actual time, and I will be giving you a grace period of 10 minutes um, if you're going to be coming in a little bit later than the actual time. So if your class would be around 7 o'clock, uh, seven at seven uh, ten, or you will be given up until 7.10 or for waiting period, and then I'm going to be starting the class. So at the 11th minute, you are considered to be late. But if your class is going to be um, around 8, again, it's going to be around 8.10. And then on the 11th minute, okay, you are already late. Okay, and definitely I am going to be giving deductions on that one. As to, uh, you should be able to be responsible for any missed lessons. So it's either ask me or you ask our classmates about what are the things that were discussed and what are the things that are going to be assigned. Okay, particularly your performance tasks, your major exams. Now, um, it at any point that um, there are going to be misconduct like cheating or any type of academic dishonesty, okay, it's going to be considered a major offense, especially during exams, wherein particularly, I doubt kung paano kaya mag-cheat sa mga, sa mga exams ko uh, because most of my exams are actually performance tasks, okay, wherein you will be sanctioned, okay, that is provided in the NU handbook, okay. Now, um, class participation in class activities are expected. Even if there are recorded activities, you should be able to participate, especially if it's going to be a group activity. And always maintain courtesy and cooperation during our classes. Okay, so mainly that is uh, going to be our uh, class policies. Okay, now. In my class, my dear students, um, usually uh, I give around two to three performance tasks, okay, for uh, just before any major exam. So it could be two uh, or three uh, performance tasks, okay, before the midterms and before the finals. And usually the la or the third and the last uh, performance task would also be considered your uh, major exam. So, as much as possible, you try to pass these on time, okay, so that you won't be having any problems, especially that uh, if you have not submitted anything on time, then I am going to be marking you as incomplete, which later on you have to file on your own, okay, because once I submit your grades in the system, there's no turning back anymore, okay. So technically, assessments, um, usually I give less uh, of uh, written works, but I give a lot of performance tasks, and I give emphasis on the submission uh, of the major exams on time. Okay, so there you go. Okay, percentages. Okay, so technically, this is very, very easy to understand. 60% um, or your midterms is actually graded according to this. 30% uh, for written, 30% for performance tasks, and then midterm exam would be at 40%. Now, um, just please be guided that a percentage of your midterms grade is also carried over to your final. So as much as possible, try to complete your midterms as well. Okay, uh, so that it won't affect your final grade. Okay, so there you go, uh, my uh, dear students. Uh, technically, that is the first part of uh, our uh, session for this morning. Uh, we're in or for the session for our session, and basically, that would be the introduction of your physical education 13. Okay, and uh, don't worry that uh, this uh, video is actually being recorded so that you would be able to go back, okay, uh, on a timely basis if you think that you have forgotten anything. Okay, so with that, my dear students, um, 
uh, that would be the first part of uh, our lesson or actually that would be the first part of our session for this morning and uh, we are going to be moving on to our first topic okay let me just pull up my resources here there we go okay and our first topic would be all about badminton. There. And I hope that uh, you are able to see, okay, the presentation, okay, that I have gotten online. Okay. And this is going to be all about badminton. So, um, let us talk first a quick overview on what is the sport all about. Okay. And uh, what is a quick history about the sport? So mainly over um, uh, the game of badminton was introduced by the British military officers way back in 1860 in British India. So technically India before was a co colony of uh, Great Britain wherein it was introduced, uh, the, the sport was introduced to them. And it was actually a racket sports Okay, that was used as a leisurely time, okay, or as a leisure activity for the monarchs, okay, sa mga mayayaman, okay. And this is actually a game wherein it is a racket sport that is played on a court divided by a net, okay, that is five feet high. Okay, so medyo may kataasan ng konti, pero hindi naman masyad, masyadong mataas, wherein the game is played with a bird or what we call the ball is a shuttlecock. So it is not a bouncy ball that you are going to be playing, but instead it is a literally a flying bird. Okay, so um, this game is actually can be played okay, by either singles or doubles. Okay, wherein the objective of the game is to hit the shuttlecock over the net. Okay, so that the uh, opponent okay will try to hit back and we are going to let them try to miss okay the 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 hit going to you or they they will be able unable to hit it okay and it would land on the ground or if they are able to hit it it would go over or go beyond the border lines of uh, your uh, of your playing court okay Ah. So, in England, this was actually called, uh, the sport was actually called uh, badminton. Okay? But in Japan, it is named as uh, Hanitsuki. Okay? And in India, okay, par particularly that this was introduced in the town of Pune, this was actually, uh, this was named as Pune. Yeah. So in 1893, um, England was able to institute the association or the Badminton Association England, wherein in 1899, an All England Open Badminton Championships were held. Okay. Now in 1972, okay, up until 1988, this was considered to be an Olympic exhibition game. So it was not um, actually declared as a formal or as an official game. And it was only in 1992, during the Barcelona Olympics, badminton was recognized or just became an Olympic sport. So, batang bata, ano? Uh, it was uh, very, very young. Uh, it was at, at a very young age that this game was uh, actually introduced into the Olympics. Actually, right now, no, marami na pong leagues or there are actually a lot of leagues here in Asia that recognizes the sport of badminton and one of them would be the BWF or the Badminton World Federation wherein they held their World Cups four times in a year. Okay, uh, fortunately, ako po, uh, I'm very lucky to uh, watch one of those games um, in uh, Jakarta, Indonesia way back in uh, 2014. Uh, and uh, ang isa sa mga naging idol ko or one of the people who I idolize in the game of uh, badminton was uh, particularly Lee Chong Wei of Malaysia. Okay, so um, let us, uh, just before we go into the main idea of the sport, um, I'll be giving you first, okay, uh, what are the things that you need to remember, okay, when you play the game of badminton, 
So the first one would be safety. The first thing that you need to remember is that you have to make sure to always have a firm grip on the racket. Okay, so that is the first one. Second, you have to be careful of not hitting your partner or the opponent with your racket. Okay, that is a no-no. That is a very, um, that is a major foul in the game of badminton. You have to stay on your court. Okay, because uh, uh, that is owning, okay, uh, what we say, the side or, or protecting your side, especially during a game. You uh, should be able to stop playing if others enter your court. So it means that there are, shouldn't be any disturbances, especially from the audiences. And if your bird goes into another court, okay, wait until their play stops. Okay, so basically, napunta to sa ibang court. Okay, antayin niyo munang matapos yung uh, matapos muna yung inning na yon bago po kayo uh, bago niyo po kunin yung inyong shuttlecock. And always be careful and be aware of your surroundings, particularly the pole, the poles, the walls, the playing court, the net, everything that you uh, that where you are going to be playing. Okay? So, what are the different types of equipments that uh, you are going to be using? So, first would be rackets, okay? These are actually, okay, specialized rackets wherein most of the rackets that are being used in badminton are very fragile. So, you have to avoid hitting the floor, kasi mababali po yan kaagad, the walls, the posts, the nets, and of course, other people. Handle the shuttlecock carefully and only by their rubber tips. Sangat maari, you do not hold the feathers, okay? Because if birds get stuck in the net, remove them carefully so that they do not tear, okay? So technically, you should be able to uh, clean, okay, your rackets on a timely basis, especially if you think that the feathers are on your racket already. If your assigned racket is damaged, report it to your teacher, so... Okay, uh, at the beginning of the class, or you yourself, you should be able to look into uh, of uh, replacing or uh, adjusting your rackets. And if you don't, uh, and if you don't, you are held responsible for the damage, and you might be paying for it. Okay, especially kung gagawin na po natin yan dito sa klase or in school. Um, technically, uh, you are going to be bringing your own. Pero yung shuttle ka, ka, kahit kami na po yung magpo-provide ng sign up. Okay? So make sure to return your rackets um, next time ano, pag nasa school na po tayo, um, everything that uh, you borrow from us will actually be accountable for you. Okay? So technically, um, it's numbered uh, because the equipment that you're going to be borrowing, okay, are numbered and you have to bring it back Okay, so what are the different techniques that uh, we are going to be focusing in the game of uh, badminton? Particularly, we are going to be looking into service, long or short service, your forehand, okay, wherein um, you should be able to move your arms in the correct manner, whether you are a right-hander or a left-hander. Wherein, for right-handed players, a stroke will hit when the shuttle is on your right side of your body and you are going to be having an open uh, open chest uh, acceptance and you are going to be uh, moving from the back going forward. Later, there is a video that is going to be shown unto you. Now, for left-handed players, a stroke is when the shuttle is on the left side of the body and it's also going to be on the same procedure. Round the, uh, around the head or overhead, stroke played on the left or backhand side of the body. Smash a hard hit over overhand stroke with a fast downward path. And it is the main attacking stroke. Drive a powerful hit, forehand or backhand stroke, which just clears the top of the net. Clear a stroke which sends the shuttle high over the opponent's head and drops near the backcourt boundary line. It may be hit with an overhand or underhand stroke and can be used as offensive or defensive play. Drop shot. This, uh, the shuttle is stroked over the net so it drops very, very close to the net. Okay, so mainly these are the different techniques that we are going to be focusing in uh, badminton. Okay. So, 
Scoring is uh, also going to be included wherein points are scored only by the serving side and a point is rewarded to the serving side whenever the other side commits a fault. Okay, so please be guided that the scoring in uh, in badminton would be as follows. So in doubles, uh, you should be able to reach okay 15 points. But now I think it is uh, already uh, we are already adapting to the 21 points. Um, we're in okay. You should be able to have a two uh, point advantage uh, again, but when. Uh, and you should be able to finish uh, one whole set before uh, going into the other side. Okay. Now, please be guided that after our game has been set, the score is called Love All, and the side of the first score fives or three wins, the uh, wins the game. So technically, we play either five sets, just like in volleyball, or uh, uh, best of two out of three. Uh, games okay if it's going to be um, a modified now in singles uh, we follow also the 21 point not the 11 point anymore wherein again we are also following um, the two man at uh, uh, um, the two uh, score adjustment or two point score adjustment and um, as much as possible we try to get into okay a uh, set all score okay for each game okay so general rules so winners of the first game uh, must serve the first in the next game okay so technically you should be able to uh, have the same service in the succeeding games so teams change sides after each set game any shuttle landing on the lines are good Okay, so technically, pag tumama po sa line, good po yan. Now, during a rally, if the shuttle shot touches the net and it goes over, it is considered um, a good ball. Okay, now, we are also going to be talking about strategy. Okay, wherein the idea of the game is putting your opponent on the defensive end. Now, when you hit the bird, okay, your opponent who should be able to have the possibility of returning in an upward direction. Okay? Now, you time your smash, okay, or attacking your opponent if possible. So you don't smash all the time, okay? You have to look into the weaknesses of your opponents, okay? Are, are they able or are they able or, or do they have a hard time chasing the shuttlecock or do they have a hard time uh, going to the back, going in front, etc. Okay. Um, you should be able to know okay, the different times of shots and you should be able to keep your opponent moving. So, and you should also know how to recover on your own court, particularly repositioning yourself as quick as possible. Okay. Now, in the system of play, usually uh, we follow in doubles. We look into the side-by-side -side for defensive positioning. We have up and back, okay, where in one, uh, one of the players in front and the other one is in back, and the combination, okay, where in the combinations of both systems, both offensive and defensive manners, okay? So here are some terminologies that we are actually looking into. Okay, in the uh, in the game of volleyball, so you have your alley, back alley, baseline, bird, carry, center, or basic position. Okay, so I'll give it a few seconds so that you are able to look into it. Okay, next would be clear, double hit, doubles, drive, drop shot, fall, and game. Okay, home position, inside, inning, kill, let, lob, love, match, mix doubles, outside
Okay, next we have hand down, serve or service, set up, singles, smash. Okay, so there you go, my uh, dear students. That is uh, actually our first lesson in uh, Physical Education 13. And uh, this is going to be focusing on badminton itself. Now, to have a clearer view on uh, what is badminton itself, I would like you to look into, okay, uh, what are the things that we actually follow in uh, badminton itself? So I am uh, going to be showing to you Okay, a, a quick video on what is the badminton. Okay, and uh, technically, uh, what are the things that uh, we are uh, looking into for you in uh, the game itself of badminton. Okay, so with that, okay, for a while, huh? Okay. So here's a short clip, okay, of uh, what is Okay, so I'm going to be showing to you a short clip on uh, what is badminton. Okay, and how do we actually play the game? Okay, so with that, please watch this uh, short presentation on what is badminton itself. Hi, I'm Nia Tran and I'm a coach here at East Bay Badminton Association. I'm going to talk about proper grips work for the sport. This would be the proper forehand grip. As you can see, the racket is pointing downwards rather than flat. And this would be the proper backhand grip with my thumb on the flat end of the racket. To start, if you're right-handed, put your right hand on the racket face. And from there, slide the racket down until you hit the grip. Close it with the first three fingers. Put your thumb above the middle finger and your hand should now form a V with the racket grip. It's really similar to shaking somebody's hand as you're holding this racket right now. So with the forehand grip, it allows you to get into proper position as you turn out the racket and swing with your wrists without anything blocking or hurting your wrist. To do the backhand grip, all you have to do is start with the forehand grip and switch it by putting the pointing finger down and the thumb on the flat end of your racket. This gives you a nice backhand push but it wouldn't do you any good for overhead backhand shots. So for the backhand grips, all you have to do is push with your thumb out with your racket facing forward. The thumb will help you push the shots forward and give you power at a very, very close space. For an overhead backhand grip, you'll have to hold your thumb on the groove that's unangled to your grip right here. By holding it here, it does two purposes. The first, it allows you to swing at full power without having any restrictions on your wrist, and it gives you a directional choice. You can hit straight or cross a lot easier than had you used any other grip with your wrist. So we're gonna talk about the forehand overhead shot and the mechanics of it. To start off, you must have your racket up with your elbow slightly bent. 
with the other arm in front. As you're swinging the shot, make sure to pivot your body and extend your hand first without, bend, without straightening out your elbow. The last second, you must make sure to flick your wrist and turn out the racket head, which is very important. You won't be able to hit anything if the racket is like this. So turn out the racket head, snap the wrist, and follow through to the side and not downwards like this. This would be a standard forehand overhead shot. We're going to talk about the overhead backhand shot for beginners. Once again, you'll need the proper backhand grip to execute this properly. Start off with your right, your, your elbow pointing upwards and the racket head towards your left shoulder. From here, extend outwards with your arm first as you turn your body and snap at the last second with your wrist, either straight or across, up to you. And as usual, follow through properly afterwards. This is the overhead backhand shot for beginners. to talk about the standard forehand for beginners. To start off, you need the proper forehand grip. In order to hit a forehand shot underhand, you must lock your wrists first before you hit the bird and push forward with your body as you snap the wrists upwards. Key parts, you have to make sure your racket head is facing at an angle when you hit the birdie rather than directly upwards, because that'll just make it go up and not far. This is the forehand underhand shot for beginners. To talk about the backhand underhand. For this, you have to need proper backhand grip to execute this shot properly as well. Start off with your racket in front with the grip, slightly locked and the racket facing forward. As you make contact with the birdie, make sure you pivot, you push forward with your body and snap your wrist and make sure your racket is positioned at a certain angle so that it'll go forward rather than just upwards. This is the backhand underhand shot for beginners. New Similac Gain School, the world's first with five HMOs and Prodigy with. We're going to talk about proper footwork for beginners. We're going to start by talking about the forward footwork towards the front first. First will be the front forehand shot. The key points. If you are right-handed, you have to start with your left leg going forward and then ending with your right leg slightly at a lunging movement. Make sure the foot is turned towards the direction in which you're going towards and not to the straight because you could potentially injure yourself and twist your ankle like that. So always have a nice balanced support of your entire body in a lunging motion to end your footwork. This would be the footwork for going towards the front for your forehand side. We're going to talk about the forward motion for your footwork towards your backhand side now. To start off, make sure your left foot goes first if you're right-handed and end with your right leg in a lunging motion, reaching towards the net. Make sure the foot is pointing the proper direction, like to balance your body in a proper lunge, rather than any other direction, which potentially can help you cause your, twist your ankle. This is how you do the footwork for the front net backhand. As you approach the net, this is how you return back to base again. 
make sure you shuffle first rather than taking a step back first. The reason being, if you shuffle first, if your opponent decides to re-drop you, you can easily push forward with your left leg because your, right, your racket is still in front of you and kill the birdie. That would not allow you to do that had your leg been back here. It would take a longer time to jump forward to swing for the shot. This is how you move back to base after going forward. We're going to talk about the forehand side footwork. To start off, make sure you start with your left foot and lunge outwards with your right foot. Make sure that the, your foot is pointing towards the direction in which you're lunging towards and not straight because then you could possibly twist your ankle. So we don't want that. So now have a nice balance and have a nice lunging motion. From here, shuffle back. This is how you do the forehand side footwork. We're going to talk about the footwork for going towards our backhand side. To start off, make sure you push step with your left leg and end with your right leg towards the side that you want to go towards. Make sure the foot is pointing towards that direction and not outwards in any other way because you could potentially twist your ankle. Have a nice balance in the lunging motion and hit your backhand and shuffle back to base. This is how you do the footwork towards your backhand side. We're going to now talk about the forehand backcourt footwork. To start off, take your back leg one step back towards the direction in which you want to go towards and make shuffle movements until you get to the back. Ending with the right leg having the weight of your body. From here, swing and run back to base. This is how you do the forehand backcourt footwork for beginners. We're now going to talk about the footwork go, to go back towards our backhand backcourt side. Step with your left foot towards the direction in which you want to go towards and step with the next leg with your right leg. Continue following the birdie as you shuffle until you see the birdie, you're in right position and the weight of your body should be on your right leg. From here, hit the shot, pivot quickly and run back to base. This is how you do the footwork for the backcourt backhand for beginners. This will be the six basic footwork for beginners for moving towards the corners and going back to baseline. Isang epic K-pop experience at libo-libo prizes ang naghihintay sa iyo sa Go K-pop promo. I talk about the short serve where you would stand to serve, you would stand closer towards the front baseline with your right leg forward. To do the backhand short serve, start by having your backhand grip, meaning the thumb is on the flat end of your racket. Start by positioning the racket's head face down in front of you, like so. Next, put the birdie in front and in the middle of the racket. Make sure that you hold it by one of the feathers of the bird so you have good control and feel of the bird. Once you put it in the middle, the serve starts as soon as you go forward with your racket, meaning you can do anything else before that, but as soon as it goes forward, it has to be in one smooth motion and it cannot stop. So from here, 
push forward gently with your fingers and over the net. To do the forehand short serve, start by positioning your right foot in the back and your racket face down. From here, hold the bird with one feather in front of you, like so. Make sure the cork is facing downwards. From after that, you'll drop the birdie first, swing forward, and make sure the contact point is below your waist with the racket pushing forward like so. For the forehand serve, same concept. Make sure the contact point is below the waist. A general tip for beginners for short serves is when you begin, aim for the white tape on the net. This way, you'll get your practice out and you'll get to practice getting it right over the tape. Today we're going to talk about the long serve for beginners, both backhand and forehand. The goal of the long serve is to get it nice and high and deep and far onto your opponent's side so that it opens up the court for you. To do the long serve with the forehand, the first step is to have a nice forehand grip. From there, have your dominant leg, if you're right-handed, that would be your right leg, in the back, holding the birdie with, on the feather, facing forward, with the cork facing forward. Position yourself so that the birdie is in front and the racket is down here, next to your sides, wrist locked and ready to swing. Start by releasing the birdie first before you swing. A lot of beginners make the mistake of dropping and swinging at the same time. The timing would be off and you wouldn't get a very good shot from that. So make sure you hit it in front of you rather than to the side of you. Start by dropping the birdie, count one, and then swing with a full pivot motion. This is the forehand long serve. To do a backhand long serve, start by positioning yourself with your right foot in front, racket in front, at an angle. Hold the birdie with two fingers onto one of its feathers and position it in front of your racket. Start by pulling back and locking your wrists, and as you approach forward, go at a fast and powerful speed. This is the backhand long serve. And that was the long serve, both forehand and backhand, for Batman. If you would like to play or learn more about the sport, you can visit us on our web at www.eastbaybadminton.com. Okay, so there you go. Those will actually be some of the basics that uh, we are going to be looking into uh, the game of badminton. Okay, now for the second part is that I'm going to be showing to you a demonstration video of what I have done and wherein this is going to be um, a more focused, okay, a more focused um, idea on how should you be doing your first task so with that i would like you to look into okay into okay the two videos that i have prepared for you of your actual activity that you are going to be doing and this is going to be considered your first performance task so with that my dear students please watch the video Okay, so again, good day to everyone and welcome to the first part of our uh, video for today, wherein we are going to be um, demonstrating the idea of short service and long service. 
Now remember in that in short service, we have discussed that in a real badminton court, what happens is that your shot o'clock of the ball uh, would actually be going near into um, the, uh, we call this the space of your, or the receiving space of uh, your opponent, that would be the, uh, the line right after the net, wherein they should be able to try to answer it back. Now, usually, um, just a quick review, now, for the flick or the short service, this is actually used or this is actually best for double smashes as this will try to place the shuttle clock into um, an area wherein your opponent will try to have a hard time answering that, especially if both of them are going to be inside the court. Now, the other one would be the long service, okay, or the underhand forearm service wherein the shuttlecock will actually be brought to the back or uh, it will have a very long uh, direction uh, in, uh, in the, the badminton court wherein um, your opponent will try to um, answer it back. Now on this note, the long service okay, is actually best for singles matches as your opponent will try to chase it Okay, all the way to the back to be able to answer it. So what we're going to be doing right now is that we are going to try to do five short services and then five long services. Now, I do have a wall here where I'm going to pretend that this is the net and I'm going to let the shuttle clock touch into the wall. When it goes down, I pick it up and I restart again with my service. Okay, so here we go. We'll start with the short service. So it's a flick. Okay, the shuttle clock is right in front of you. Your uh, badminton racket is right in front of you, and you're doing a backhand service. Okay, so uh, flick, kicks. That's one. Bring back. That's two. And that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> now this time we are going to be uh, performing a uh, long, okay, or what you call a, uh, uh, a a forehand underhand service that would create a long shot this time. So in this motion, okay. You redirect your foot where you are going, and then uh, put your uh, put the shuttlecock right in front of you with your racket facing uh, going up. Okay, so let's try. Ready, set, and go. Okay, this one. Let's pick it up. Ready, two. Four. One more time. And five. Okay. On this note, my dear students, uh, we have completed, okay, both five short services and five long services so that you can use for the game of badminton. On this note, my dear students, what we are after here is the full demonstration only of um, your service and um, of your service. And if you could do this either with a wall or you could ask someone to partner up with you so that you can do the, um, the services and the strokes even better. You are not limited to just using a wall, okay? or just using um, a net that would catch and uh, get your shuttlecock. But as much as possible, what I'm trying to do, uh, what are we trying to uh, do here is for you to be able to demonstrate the proper strokes of these skills.
So with that, my dear students, I hope you have understood something in our demonstration video. And thank you for watching this short video. Until then, see you in the next video. Okay, so see you in the next video, which I am uh, going to be showing to you right now. And in this video, we are going to be also including the basic strokes and movement, okay, that we have learned in the previous video. Okay, so with this one, I am also going to be showing to you what would be some of um, the additional court movements and racket movements, okay, or stroke movements or hand movements in the game of badminton itself. So with that, my dear students, please watch the next video. Hi, good morning to everyone and welcome to our session for this day. So mainly for today, what we are going to be focusing would be the different types of badminton okay strokes that we use in the game itself but before we start let us begin this session with a quick warm-up first so all of the warm-up that we're going to be doing today would be dynamic warm-up exercises so let us begin so i'm going to start from the far end of uh, this hall here where if i have placed markers where two of them are cups and two of them would be badminton uh, shuttle cups. For the first exercise, uh, I would like everyone that let us start by uh, doing walking activities. So you just need to walk forward and back. And while we're walking, let's bend our head down, up, then to the right, and to the left. Down, up, then to the right, then to the left. Okay, every time you bend your head, count two steps. Let's start this time. Rotate slowly as you walk. Rotate, go in to the other side. Rotate again. Rotate again. Next would be shoulders up and down, up and down, up and down, and then swing your arms across. This will help your arms perform proper okay, back and strokes, particularly your forearm and your back, back hand. Next, swing them up and down. Grammarly helps you work more efficiently, which makes accomplishing your work goals easier. This is good for your smash and for your drop. Now next, let us work on your midsection and your waist. So you just need to bend all the way down, touching your knees and your toes. So step, touch your knees up, then your toes. Step, touch your knees, and then your toes. Step, touch your knees, and then your toes. All right, then going back, also the same. Okay, bend down, touch your knees first, and then your toes. Walk, knees, toes. Knees, and then toes. Okay, next would be waist twist. Okay, waist twisting. So from uh, the starting marker, walk forward, it's, okay, waist, twist, elbow, okay, to knee back okay. one more set okay. 
Next is walking lunges. Lunge. 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 Make sure that your backs are straight. Going back. Lunge. 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 One more set. Lunge. Lunge. And then lunge. Okay. Going back. One more. Lunge. 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 Okay. Now, this time we're going to be doing exercises or warm up warm up exercises that would entail you to do proper footwork in the game of badminton. So let us begin with three sets of jogging forward and back. So jog. Just one set. Two sets. Three sets. Then jump forward, back pedal. Okay. Three sets. This one. Two. And then three. Then we're going to be doing T run. So jump forward, back pedal, and then step and slide to the side. Step and slide to the side. And to the center. And then jog forward. Back. Second set. This is your second set. Step and slide. And jog again. Back. Step and slide. Step and slide. Okay. So with that, my dear students, we have already finished your uh, warm-up exercises for badminton, and mainly those are being used, or those movements are being used for the game itself. Now this time, I would like you to get your rackets, and let us begin with gripping, okay? And gripping and your strokes. So remember that during the discussion, there are two types of grips, okay? We have your hand-shaped grip, and we have your thumb grip, okay? Remember that your hand shape grip is that your thumb is at the side of the racket, and then your thumb grip is that your thumb is right in front of the racket. Your hand shape grip is used for your forehand, your overhead shot, and your underhand shot, which is all forearm, okay? For your thumb grip, okay, you're, go you're going to be using this for backhand, overhead backhand okay and underhand backhand but to make it to make this more interesting okay let us do some uh, let us include some movement okay with uh, with your forehand strokes okay wherein you're going to be okay uh, moving forward all forehand first let's start on the right side of the area wherein we are all going to be doing five forehand shots. So, how's that? So in this area, from the starting, okay, you're going to stop, take a forehand shot. As you can see, my stance, okay, is going to be square stance wherein um, my, my, my legs are open, slightly bend your knees and one foot forward, and my racket is uh, all the way up. Okay, so let us try again, coming back, okay, forward, back pedal, forward, all four arm, forward, three, four, and then five, okay. Now this time we're going to be starting here and then we are going to be doing overhead shots with the forehand. Okay, so get ready from here. Back pedal. Okay, forward, back pedal, forehand, back pedal, forehand, three, four.
and then up. Okay. Next, we're going to be doing backhand, okay, backhand strokes. This time we're going to be using the left side of the area of our cone. So this one, again, just like your uh, first exercise of one the forehand. This time we're going to start from the back cone and then we're going to be moving forward and then take an air shot. Okay? Yes. Okay? So from here, jump forward, stance, near shot. Back pedal, jump forward, stance, near shot. Back pedal, forward, near shot, two. Three, four, and five. Okay, now this time we're going to be doing overhead shots, but we are going to start from near cone all the way back, back pedal, and then take a near shot. Okay, uh, overhead shot. Okay, so remember that your thumb should be at in front of your racket near to its neck, okay? So that you'll have uh, better control, okay? So, but yet, if you would want to adjust, okay, your handle, it's all fine. Um, make sure that you are very comfortable with how you handle your racket, and as much as possible, do not let this uh, touch into the ground by uh, smashing, okay? So get ready, backhand, uh, overhead shot, and go. Back, back pedal. Stands, back hand, back, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now, let us try combining all of those four movements into, or let us simulate like it is in an actual game. So you're going to start with a near shot forehand, overhead shot forehand, then near shot backhand, overhead shot backhand. Okay, so let us try. Ready? Let's try doing this five times. So we'll start on the right side of uh, your uh, cone setup and then we'll move to the left side. As much as possible, let us try to move in in the formation. So, far hand, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Start with the third set. Back hand. Forehand. Fourth set. Last set. Okay. So there you go, my dear students. Those are your different strokes and grips that we are actually using in an actual ba uh, badminton game. Now, remember that you are actually combining this with service, wherein you are actually using a short service with the use of a flick shot or a long shot that would be coming from an underarm swing. Okay? Now, when we go back to our class, we're going to be further explaining everything, okay? What is the importance of this one and how can it apply to the bet, uh, for the development of your uh, fitness level, okay? Until then, my dear students, this is your coach, Chris, telling everyone, have a great day and enjoy the game of badminton. See you in the next video.
Okay, so there you go, my dear students. Okay, but uh, just before I uh, leave uh, you, your first performance that's task that you are going to be focusing on for the, for the next two weeks, I'll be giving you first a quick screen break of uh, 10 minutes so that you are able to process first okay um, everything that uh, we have uh, talked for this uh, session and you would have also a quick a complete understanding of what we have uh, talked about for today's session so with that i'll be it's uh, uh okay so 10 minutes okay so 10 minutes uh will be starting right now so you could grab uh something to drink or maybe relieve yourself from <clears throat> uh in the comfort room for us uh, for a very short while and then after that when we come back i'll be explaining to you what is going to be your first class so with that i'll see you after 10 minutes
Okay, so welcome back, my uh, dear students, and I hope that uh, you have uh, had okay your uh, good uh, break. Uh, and uh, with that, I am now going to be assigning to your first performance task that uh, is going to be uh, given the due date up until April 25. So technically next week, it's going to be an asynchronous uh, session, but I am uh, going to be opening our session for next week. Uh, for attendance purposes and for updates of the task that you that I have assigned to you okay so for your first performance task okay uh, this is going to be mainly an introduction to badminton and the instruction says let us now get up and going by doing our badminton assigned activity so what you're going to be doing for today is that you would be submitting a recorded video of yourself performing a, a badminton fitness routine wherein you should be able to demonstrate first five dynamic warm-up exercises okay wherein you're going to be performing one set and then there is uh, an example video okay that i have posted there wherein you should um, you are going to be copying okay the exercises that are being done there that is related to the game of badminton okay next is that you are going to be performing two kinds of service wherein you're going to be performing it for three sets you could either do this um, against a wall just like uh, what i did in uh, the video presentation or you could do it with someone okay in an open um, area so maybe you could ask um, a classmate if uh, someone uh, lives nearby you or you could ask a family member maybe your mom your dad your siblings your cousins your relatives okay next uh, number three is go you are also going to be uh, doing a combination of four or five footwork and racket strokes wherein uh, you're going to be doing for three sets which I have all I have also posted a the video that I have shown to you a while ago Okay, and then the last one would be performing five cool down exercises uh, in the video that I have posted as well. And you just need to form one set. So, sir, technically, are we just going to be copying the exercises that uh, you have shown to us? Yes, it's as easy as that one. And you just need to record yourself doing these exercises. Now, please be guided that you may apply time lapse into your video presentations, but two times only. You can include music in your video presentation and you should be able to wear proper sportswear including shoes and socks now um, this activity will actually be not 20 points but 30 points huh? okay it's 30 points not 20 points um, for for both written and performance tasks uh, and this is not your final grading so later i'm going to be editing this assignment okay wherein i would be checking for five points for the demonstration of the warm up and cool down exercises, 20 points for the demonstration of the different skills in badminton, and another five points if you were able to submit a complete video on time. Okay, so with that, my dear students, basically that is going to be your first assigned task that I have already given to you, and I am expecting everyone that you should be able to submit this task by April 25, and that would be up until 11:59 in the evening. Okay, so with that, my dear students, basically that is going to be our first lesson for this session, and it is going to be focusing on on badminton. So with that. If you do have any further questions or clarifications, just address it during the session um, that I have opened that uh, your teacher or that I have opened this morning so that we could address it immediately before you leave the session room and start with your task. And with that, my dear students, I hope you enjoyed our session for this morning. This is your coach Chris telling everyone, have a great day and see you in the next session. Have a great day, everyone.